morning. My name is Shirley Lawson. I'm an assistive technology and ASN teacher here at Call Scotland and I'm delighted on behalf of the team to welcome Bob Sagu from Praetorian. Hi, Bob. How are you today? Um, hi. Oh, sure. Sorry, I just uh, clicked off the wrong button. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. You want to stick your camera on just for a I quick second? I stick my then? camera on. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Apologies. It is very much a face for radio. I do apologise. <laughs> I try and sort of stay away from re reflective surfaces, but uh, it is me and my entirety. So, uh, but uh, great to meet everybody. Thank you so much for giving up your time this afternoon to, uh, and I hope I, you know, what what follows is informative and, and gives you. Uh, you know, uh, a viewpoint as to where Praetorian are with regards to um, a really exciting topic, which is assistive gaming. Yeah, so just thank you. And just as a, as a follow on the introduction, just as Bob is a long time friend of us all here at Call Scotland, um, and we've all recommended Praetorian products for some of the children and young people we work with for educational purposes. But today's webinar focuses on assistive solutions for gaming, you know, the fun stuff. So he's going to be looking at solutions for the Xbox, Nintendo and PC gaming. So really looking forward to it. It's going to be around 20 minutes uh, that Bob is going to present for. And then I'm going to do uh, some question and answer. So please put your questions into the chat pane and we'll be able to ask Bob at the end of the session. Um, Robert is here today in the background doing the recording for us, which is great. And then everyone will be sent a link to the recording. And it will also sit on our website as an archive webinar. So. Bob, I'm just going to hand over to you now uh, and off you go. And thank you so much again. Thanks for a great uh, intro, Shirley. I really appreciate it. Too kind. Uh, right, I'm just going to switch my camera off and then we'll jump straight into it. So, yes, so um, Torian Technologies, assistive gaming and um, a, really, uh, a really hot topic. In the last sort of like, I'd say, 18 months, um, things have really um moved on in, in, in a huge way and it's great for us for me to be here talking to you to you all about you know solutions real solutions that actually work in assisted gaming and that uh, uh you know are empowering and enable uh individuals whatever the age to to access you know a number of different gaming platforms the xbox the uh, nintendo and also pc gaming so a little bit of of an intro search. Uh, it, I'm, I'm sure many of you are familiar or have heard of Praetorian or have heard of our products as such. Just a brief intro with regards to, to the company. So we were founded in 2011. Um, people are a surprise. I am especially with, the, with the, the range of products that we have. So we are in a true sense of the word, an OEM. And um, you know, as I said, we, we design and manufacture on site in our facility in, in Gainsborough in Lincolnshire. Um, we ship everything from stock and and we have a huge amount of stock that we carry and um, we are we have a global footprint so we supply our products um, literally to all four corners as it were and um, you yeah, know it, it's it's great for a company of our size to have the 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 the, the scope that we do and the, the the reach that we do because you know there are you know, individuals all over the world who are who are using our solutions, and it's great and really gratifying to 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 be part of a solution that's really supporting um, yeah individuals that need to access assistive technology. A little bit about me, not too much because I'm not that interesting. I say Bob Segu is my name. Um, I so my role is official role, title role is is is, is the UK and international sales manager. I've been in the AT industry for for, for over ten years. Um, I'm sure he's very kindly sort of give me a, a, a really nice intro. I've known, of course, Scotland for a number of years, and it's a great organisation, and it's, it's a real privilege to to be involved, you know, with them for, for that length of time. Um, uh, I started in this industry, uh, run my own business, looked at all the different aspects of of, of the assistive tech uh, world and AAC as well. Uh, um, so it's given me really good grounding as to 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 where I think the the, the industry is and where it's where it's going uh, in that respect. I'm based in the UK. I, I do travel a lot. I have to say that in my role, uh, it's great to talk virtually with people, but I love to meet people face to face. So I'm, you know, I, I go to the US a lot. I'm going to Europe and so forth. But I do talk to a lot of our uh, 
uh, resellers and distributors all over the world virtually. And, and uh, when I get the opportunity now, sort of COVID is is is, is passed to a degree. Uh, and things have opened up. It's great to meet up face to face with uh, with individuals, users as well as our you know our, our distributor network. Um, yeah, we have a global foot, footprint again. Um, you can do the traveling as well, but we export to over sixty countries. Um, the one size fits one ethos worth an explanation. Yes, it is. It's something that I came not. I wouldn't say I invented it, but it's something that came to me when I was running my own business. Is to which is what best uh sort of like typifies what a piece of technology is all about and i thought thinking about it and that one size fits all thing started to clear into my mind but then i realized you know what what you guys what people in the assisted tech industry do and and an and aac and so forth is we design solutions for that individual every individual is different in that respect and their need is different and that's where i think the ethos of one size fits one really does uh sort of, sort of really just capture that that the essence of that um yeah so you're going to meet my motivation in the next slide and uh, this has actually come from prompting from Shirley she said you need to sort of explain you know what your motivation is to be in this industry and I think a pet pictures you know sort of like uh, says a thousand words is it worse so here's my motivation this is my son uh he is his name's Haji uh with a h and he is um he's now 17 a very he needed 18, 17 year old uh young young man but um when he was um four months old uh we were visiting my parents uh, who have a villa in spain and whilst we were there he 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 fell ill and uh developed a virus which in turn resulted in some um uh a traumatic brain injury in the sense of uh, he, had, he developed lesions on his brain which ultimately resulted in acquiring um cerebral palsy so a uh, healthy baby born you know with no no complications uh, and then you know, suddenly we were we, we found ourselves in this situation with regards to um you know caring for a child with 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 very complex needs and what we noticed quite early on was his ability to to use um, um his eyes to 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 indicate what he wanted what he wanted to how he, if he wanted to communicate looking up and down was yes and no and so forth. So we realized that that was a good thing to, to harness as it were. And so what we did was um, I, at the time was working for a Siemens uh, in, in digital imaging is my background. And I went along to try and find a solution that would work for him. And I came across eye gaze um, very early on. And um, to cut a long story short, he's been using eye gaze since the age of four, I think. And whereas now he's, he's incredibly proficient with his eye gaze, that picture was actually at him uh, taken at uh, um, Communication Matters, which is um, another hat I wear, uh, uh, sit on the board of, of Communication Matters. And that's a big conference that's held uh, every September. And he, in 2022, actually uh, submitted an abstract and presented uh, Communication Matters using his eye gaze to, to, to uh, to give a really good presentation. Uh, I did present at the same conference and I sort of like openly admit that he had more people at his co his uh, presentation than I did. And he got a, a, a sort of like a, a far, you know, uh, louder and longer uh, round of applause than, than I did. But, you know, we try and be competitive, him and I, but uh, yeah, but yeah, there's my motivation. And, uh, you yeah, know, he pushes me to find solutions for, for for individuals that want to experience new aspects and assistive gaming is one of those new topics that people are really keen to uh, to explore and, and 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 as i say he's you know being able to provide a solution that he's been able to access and 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 take that forward to other individuals has been has been great so here's my motivation in that respect so right let's get on to where we are with regards to um assistive gaming so uh, there is a couple of caveats with regards to assisted gaming. What it does from a, from a, from a, an engagement perspective, a therapeutic perspective, whatever you want to, to to look at. I think the few points I've listed there is is are really cool in the sense of you get you know it provides a sense of purpose for, for, for gamers. Um, um, I found, especially during lockdown, especially uh, that individuals were wanting to access more. Uh, activities and they were like restricted to what they could do in their own house or in their own bubble 
and gaming was something that they 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 it enabled them to interact with others it enabled them to sort of like uh to to to, to really sort of um take advantage of being on, on isolated to a certain degree and, and develop the skill sets that they are uh, needed to, to 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 play as it were and to, and to engage and so forth so it was a great leading into the next point of regards to simulation it's incredibly sort of helpful in that respect and there's a number of OTs that I talked to who said that it's, it's great to see uh, to incorporate system gaming into that um, um, therapy aspect as well um, again it's very fulfilling and you know you get to play against other people which you otherwise wouldn't meet so with regards to gaming now you can play virtually you know online and and that just opens up a whole new avenue of of interaction that to a certain degree may not be available to uh, to, to gamers at the moment or at time so bear with me because i think my oops There we go. Ah, nice. So, how did this all begin? Excuse me, I'm just going to have a sip of water. Uh, so, I, I'm sure a lot of you already be aware or familiar with uh, what Xbox launched in 2018 uh, with regards to their adaptive controller. We call it the XAC or we call it the ZAC. And I know the, the team behind it. And um, um, as general called Bryce Johnson, and what they did, and it's now we're now in 2023, pretty much 2024. This is still, I think, the benchmark with regards to um, assistive controllers. Um, you've got a huge amount of connectivity. Um, it replicates all the controls that you would out of a normal um, uh, Xbox controller, handheld controller. Uh, if I just skip to the next slide, you can see the amount of connectivity you've got there. You've got Pretty much switch access for pretty much any any and all sort of functions that you would have on a uh, a normal xbox controller it's bluetooth so it'll talk wirelessly to the console and um it is it makes it's a fund fundamental part of of a number of solutions that we provide and again it's incredibly you know portable as well i think you can buy it from the still buy it from the microsoft website directly and i think it's in the region for like 75 pounds which i think for for gaming and gaming sort of like equipment is is, is quite uh, quite competitively priced. But yeah, that's the benchmarks and that's what we we work towards. There are other solutions that I'll come on to later on. Uh, one in particular that's coming out next month, which has got a lot of interest. Um, but yeah, so that's the 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 the, the solution that we sort of base our you know um, um, our infrastructure of assistive gaming around, which is the 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 XSC or the Microsoft Adaptive Controller. So how did we respond? This is really cool. So what we did was you looked at um, our computer access solutions with regards to our joysticks and and, and, and so forth. So okay, how can we make these, you know, um, work within that list of gaming sort of bracket? So that particular product there is called the Optima uh, joystick. And that is dual functionality in the sense of that uh, it has the ability to go from um uh working as just a normal mouse to switching to becoming uh, a gaming joystick so replicating joy uh, gaming movements as it were so it's a, a dual purpose sort of solution and i think that's something that we thought would be really beneficial to users to be able to sort of not have to disconnect any joysticks or any piece of and connect something up they've got something they can effortlessly sort of switch uh, between modes so we, we that's one of the first responses we made Key thing there, as you see, it says that it works with uh, a multi-platform, so it'll work with the Xbox, it'll work with the P, uh, with the PC, it'll work with the Nintendo Switch. Um, next size is really quite interesting because um, a lot of times when you see pictures or images of gaming solutions, they look really nice, nice and tidy, and 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 you know not really cluttered or or anything like that. Um, this is probably more realistic of what a gaming rig or gaming setup would uh, uh, tends to look like. You've got switches access. You've got two joysticks there. You can control movement and the view on on one or or both, as it were. But that's by its very nature how gaming tends to sort of look. And for us, for me, not being a gamer, which has been you know really great from my perspective, because I'm coming to this from that perspective of 
hmm, I'm not really over familiar with this and I'm learning as I go along and I'm seeing it from perspective that a lot of other individuals or users are and um, a, a gaming setup is very very much a personal um, uh, choice and a personal setup so it's great to be able to offer all this sort of versatility and connectivity and you can use it however way you wish and set it up however way you wish but uh, yeah that's a really good illustration of uh, of the sort of gaming setups that you can you, you can uh, you can set you can uh, you can utilize that's another one of our products which is the ultra joystick which again does the same thing it combines a, a mouse and a gaming joystick into in functional into into one device and that can be mounted uh, either on a wheelchair or onto a mount, as it were. And again, that's a really nice, uh, a really nice product. All of our our, our, uh, our joysticks also have switch connectivity as well. So there's two jack, jack two uh, uh, two uh, jack points that you can connect um, three and a half mil switch, uh, switches, wide switches too. So all right, go a bit further along. So as you manage in the front page, he's using on the front of the uh, the title page. He's he's using a, the Optima joystick, and you can probably maybe able to gauge from the picture. He's got a couple of switches that are mounted quite close to him that you can access. So it could be like he's controlling using the joystick to control movements, and the two switches are could be like accelerator or shoot or or, or or whatever function you program those switches to do, which is really really straightforward to do. What I've noticed in gaming titles is there's a lot more accessibility functionality built into to games as of late. So you can actually chop and change and map is probably the correct phrase to use map certain switches or uh, controllers to do certain certain actions. So it's the same young man again using the Optima joystick and that gentleman in the background is a, is a good friend of mine. Uh, it's Julian from Everyone Can. And it's a charity in matches that does um, a bit of gaming and I put rig to, to, to get together and there's another picture and this is this time this is using using the playstation here you can see the xac the, the adapter controller and it and then the the uh, joystick is connected to that and i think they're playing fifa which is uh which is pretty cool and there you see there's another there's standard um uh, xbox controller there as well i'll tell you a little bit about that in, in, in shortly but there's there's a really cool feature where you can get siblings playing together which is Called Copilot, and uh, it, it, it's it's a really cool and really nice feature. So, you know, you've got that element of multi players playing together, as it were, rather than someone you know, who's not been able to play a game before previously, watching from a side and not really being engaged. They can now be involved in in, in the gameplay. But I'll, I'll come onto that in, in a bit further along. So that's all right. Sorry. Eye gaze is something that I'm very familiar with. I have uh, a lot of you know experience with eye gaze, but um, it's not been possible to really for for gamers to access you know um, uh, gaming consoles when they're using eye gaze. Uh, it's been something that's not really been an option for many of them until we came up with a product, which was came about from Tommy coming up to us at a trade show and saying, "Look, I know you guys are the the, the people that are probably." Come up with a good solution. I want to be able to do this, and from that conversation, we came upon Game On. And what Game On basically does, it utilizes what's um, in, like, for example, grid pads or the Toby I series. It has built-in environmental control, and that name it, it's, it's using uh, the infrared element. And we thought we've done. We looked at Bluetooth. We looked at other different options, but we thought infrared is is the most stable. And, and a rather, you know, the more simplest way of of getting that connection working. So you, you on utilizes the infrared um, uh, capability in these AAC devices. And within Grid, which I'll, I'll, I'm using Grid as an example, we do on our website. If you go to our website, um, you'll see uh, in the Game On area, you'll see um, we we've produced Grid sets um, for 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 uh, for Grid Three. We have page sets for Communicator Five and we have um some sets for the prc accent 1400 i think which is the eye gaze tablet so there are three different um uh, bits of uh, resource that you can actually download free of charge to actually get you gaming so we, we we have that as a uh as a free to download sort of resource on our, on our website um that's a good representation of how it tends to work so you've got the game on which is 
talking uh, is connected to the um, to controller uh, as via two USB uh, cables, and you have a set of four cables as well, which give you the D-pad control, which is the sort of plus sign on the bottom left of the uh, uh, the controller that gives you movement as well. And there you've got a simple grid set that's got movement and the two buttons Y, B, uh, X and A, and you can select those with the eye gaze and that'll activate or control the gameplay that you're, uh, whatever, whatever particular game you're playing. So, um, okay, so it's just something's come up on my, uh, okay, right. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, these are examples of grid sets that we we've we've uh, put together. We work very close with Smartbox, as we have with with Toby Dynabox as well. And I will go on to the next slide, which shows you. There, you can see the layout of the controller there, and you've got the layouts on the grid set and replicating pretty much what you're seeing on the on the controller. Uh, so that was. So we have three grid sets. We have simple and intermediate, and then we have the really crazy one, which is full and again we have to put the disclaimer on that it's not for play what it is and again if you're familiar with grid three and how you edit and create grid sets what we basically do is you can create your own grid set that's specific to a specific game and what we recommend is that you um save uh a for example a a simple or an intermediate grid set and then copy it uh, uh, copy it and save it something else. Sorry, and then just copy paste the functionality that you want uh, from the full uh, grid set onto the grid set you're you're com you're compiling, as it were. So you've got all the functionality all on there. Uh, it's not intended for game play, though. I, I know one or two people actually managed to play games using that particular grid set, but it's you know it's 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 just for help for for for, for editing to create your own grid set for a specific game. Okay, dokie. Moving on. I'm just wary of the time. <laughs> um, so you've got a lot of functionality in there. You've got the ability to 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 replicate pretty much all the controls that you would be able, all for the functions as such, so you'd be able to uh, um, utilize on a normal um, um, Xbox controller, as it were. Um, uh, you've got the ability to you've got rapid fire as well. It's not rapid fire in the true sense, but it's it's an it's it's the best, you know, uh, interpretation that we can think of with regards to rapid fire. And here's copilot. So what copilot basically does is that it means that, for example, two people can be playing together. One could be using the eye gaze and um, a game on and have some simple functions on there. It could be like accelerator or brake or fire. Or, or something like that and then the other individual can be actually taking over the more advanced um movements like if it's a racing game for example uh, there's a racing game called four sound that person could be steering while the other person is using the game on is actually activating the accelerator so people you know siblings can play together and you know out yeah, I, I do this with my son i play we play a lot of video games now and he you know if there's something that's a bit more advanced that he can't control entirely on his eye case he does the simple functions and i do the, the more advanced elements and it's great it still works really really well and you know it's incredibly fulfilling for for for, for him and and also for me as well so go uh, that's an example we did a very, very big uh disability expo in london in the summer and uh, that's my friend john from uh toby dynavox and he's uh, demonstrating some arcade games, but he's got the eye gaze right in the middle at the bottom, and then the game plays on the monitor in front of uh, on the top there. Next picture is a really cool one. There's a bit of a story behind it. The next slide, I put this up on the assistive technology blog on Facebook uh, one Sunday evening, Sunday morning, because I was a bit bored, and it blew up over over the entire day. I was getting pinged with inboxes and so many different things. So what this is is this is my son Harch playing. Minecraft and the person on the far left hand side is his friend and they're not because it's co-pilot they're actually playing um against each other as it were because the the, the TV in the background is split screen so you, you can see his actions and below is where uh, his friend Will is playing so that's actually two kids or two I shouldn't say kids two young adults playing um against each other and that is is what 
it's an incredibly you know empowering picture that's what we're working towards that is what we want to be able to see is individuals playing as they would normally you know on a game having all that interaction all of that uh, aspect and um yeah we've got a huge kick out of that and and that's you know that's what we're working towards with all our solutions so that's a real quick overview on the xbox solution um the game on which is the xbox solution we do a solution for nintendo switch which i will run through very quickly it's called the flex controller uh, again it's very similar to the xbox um in the sense of it's it uh, gives you a lot of access a lot of functionality connectivity um it's not it's made by our uh, japanese distributor so it's not necessarily a product that we manufacture but we are uh we have the international distribution rights for, for this product um it will only support certain joysticks it, it does support the optimum it does support the ultra joystick which which we manufacture uh, just a quick side note on that you may have seen in the news and the media about xbox pulling support for third party controllers and such all of our controllers of all of our products are very much uh, a um, are compatible or Xbox uh, or designed for Xbox, as it were. So um, all of our products, our smoothie switches, our joysticks that are, are compatible with the Xbox, will continue to work with them, as it were. Um, also, supplies it supports eye gaze as well. The the flex controller. So, if you've got a Toby Dynavox solution, uh, an eye series, for example, or just an eye tracker with, you know, an infrared, uh, a uh, 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 sorry, an eye tracker, you can utilize um, flex controller to play on the Nintendo Switch platform. So, for example, Mario Kart, which is a huge hit in in, in our household, as I'm so sure it is with everybody, you can access Mario Kart via eye gaze using the flex controller but as a control in itself it's a great great device to use as well so bob, a young... excuse me bob i'm just going to give you uh this fantastic stuff but we are kind of running out of time so just maybe a couple more minutes a couple more minutes i will go through this as quick as possible <laughs> thank so, you don't, uh, don't feel you have to rush through it all we can we, people all you can leave them wanting more <laughs> I tell you what, I'd love to have an hour next time and I could go through everything really cool. But uh, yeah. sorry, so I'll crack on. This is a young lady using a um, a joystick to play Mario Kart. This was at the Disability Expo we did in London. And we got on the floor because she was just, uh, you know, that worked better for her. And it was just phenomenal to see her uh, playing there. Um, uh, there are some videos of some gameplay, but I will just skip through those. That's two people using uh, the Flex controller to play. I think one's playing possibly FIFA, the other one's playing a, a sort of a racing game. So I'm going to just skip through because there is a few other, there we go. The other aspect is what we do is PC gaming. So something that I wasn't really very aware of, but there is a lot of people that use PC who access gaming via PCs. So we do have a solution uh, for PC gaming, which is called the Questa joystick. And what that will do is it'll replicate the key movements that you have on a keyboard. So just to go back, You've got these hotkeys W, A, S, D. Those are the keys that control movement and navigation. The Quest joystick will replicate those movements. And what's really also quite cool, it also does diagonal movement as well. So I am most at the end. And to go along with the, jo the joystick, we have the Quest switch box. And uh, that can be you know, programmed to, to, uh, to replicate any sort of command, as it were or any sort of keyboard or mouse function and um and it, so it includes lashing for wasd so it, it's great for gaming so you could add a, a quest joystick for movement and so forth and you could have the quest switch box and access all the functions as such with regards to like move uh, not movement but actions in in the gameplay as it were yeah near the end this is the one that's getting a lot of interest this is what was called project leonardo is actually the assistive controller for ps5 so by the end of this year, we will have, I call it the holy trinity of console gaming, we'll have an assistive controller element. So you already have the Xbox, the XAC, you already have the Nintendo Switch with the Flex controller, you'll now have a solution with the PS5. It is available for pre-order. I don't know if you can still do that yet, but it was coming out in December. And again, that's something we're really excited about. Uh, that's got great potential and uh, what's really cool in this is is it has ability to map switches so you can actually you know have a switch do more than one function so it could be like accelerator or you know 
you know, um, I'm trying to think what the word I'm using is um, drifting. So you can accelerate and drift in, in, one, in one action. Um, and then the last slide uh, um, is just my details. So there's a QR code there. Please scan that. I'll take you through to the website. And um, uh, yeah, I'm, I, it's been a very brief overview. I do apologize if I've repeated myself on a number of different times, but um, I just want to make you all aware that there are solutions out there that you can access that will enable you to get into gaming, whether you're new to gaming or you want to try it out or you want to get back into gaming. There's the solutions, you know, for every skill set uh, of of you know, whether you're a um, an Agate user or not. Um, we have a solution that can cater for for for, for everyone. So please fire some questions at me. Um, I'm happy to take any if you have time. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, Bob. We actually don't really mind you being over because it's, it's so fascinating to see everything that you're offering there. And, and just seeing that picture um, of Harchie playing with his friend, you know, that's fantastic. And as you, it's great to see the photos. It's great to see see videos. And hopefully we can maybe see that one that you didn't get the chance to show. Um, but yes, yeah, some nice comments coming in just saying, uh, you know, I think it is an area, as, as we've got a comment in just saying it's an area that we want to know more about um, and get inspiration about, uh, you know, we're, we're not just providing educational solutions. We want to think of their whole range of activities and especially in terms of their social interaction to be able to be doing uh, games online is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I do like the co-pilot feature as well. So really nice to think you're uh, playing playing games with your son there, just uh, like everybody else. If anyone's got a specific question, please do put it in the chat panel. Uh, just now. Um, wait and see if anybody types in there. But uh, yeah, just and and that you know the the whole idea about using the the with eye gaze gaming. I mean that that's just fantastic with the the using the game on, uh, and with the grid sets as well. That and also to hear that you know accessibility is being more built into the games now. I mean that that's a great feature as well because obviously they go hand in hand. Yeah, I think there is there there has been a real drive forward because you know what we've been really keen to do is bang the drum loudly to say, look, there is there is there is software, there is hardware here. Now what we need is the software companies, the gaming companies, to start building in a bit more uh, accessibility aspects into the gameplay, and it's starting to come through. There there are new games that are coming out. There's a new racing game called Forza Motorsport that has a lot of accessibility even down a low vision um they've built in a lot of sort of uh, elements to that and it's it's great to see that but what really is driving things forward is is for us is say look we have solutions that work you know for 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 any sort of skill set for any individual that wishes to come in to go back to gaming to a certain degree you know, whether they've got really flex needs or or, or or not there is a solution that will in some way or another enable them to play games and if it's really sort of very just a simple sort of setup it, it can be done here in, in, in that way copilot is a great example of that mm -hmm. where you can do a lot of the movements and some it could be just a single you know grid cell activation uh, but you know the person is engaged they're actually playing the game and 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 that yeah, rather than being an outside and watching people play you're now involved in the actual gameplay itself so that's yeah, that's what we that's what we want to do. That's the whole purpose of really sort of bringing this range through and forward and promoting it in the way that we are. Is look, this is what's available now, and um, and we just want to get a bit of gaming. We want it. It, it ticks so many boxes from a therapeutic yes. perspective, mm -hmm. stimulation. So it's so mm -hmm. it's so um, you know it's it, and now with remote play as well. You know, you know, you can play with friends in different countries or or mm -hmm. down the road that you can't necessarily see. It brings everybody that much more closer. And, and that interaction is just, you know, it's it's it's, it's great. You can see I'll probably tell them I'm, I'm quite passionate about it. So sometimes yes, I struggle um, to find the words. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. What what is Harchie's favorite game? Uh, at the moment, he enjoys Minecraft. Um, okay. He enjoys um, Paint by Numbers, which is actually an app on the xbox this is another thing with regards to the consoles it's not just the games you can access there are certain apps you can access as well so he likes to paint and mm -hmm. he loves to paint by numbers so what we do on that point is i do the final movements and he just selects the color he wants and the area that wants to be colored in and yeah he loves to uh to uh create uh, little works of art which uh yeah i'm going to print them off and get them up on the uh, on the wall but 
he loves racing games. He loves fighting games. He's a typical 17 year old. He wants to play everything and anything. So, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's great. It was so nice to see a picture of him because I've just heard you talking about him. So now, now I've got him to see what he looks like. That was lovely. Um, Paul's just talking about the, you know, the gaming has lots of educational applications as well as in, in terms of developing control skills and social socialization and increasing their independence. And but the main point, I think, the whole webinar has been to, is the element of having fun. Um, yeah. And. So I just would like to say a big thank you to Bob, and I wish we had longer, and maybe we need to make a longer session so that we'll. Uh, uh, I, I will put. I will put this out. I will <laughs> put this out there now. I'm sure now because I've got you on the. I've got your. I've got you in a in a in that sort of spot. I would love to come on next mm -hmm. uh, another time, and if we have the time, actually show a proper setup with you know a live video feed of of have how things work and how interact and how you know seamless everything works together as it were. I'd love to do that. If if the uptake is there with regards to the you know, anybody listening today or watching today, if if that's something that we could put put in but I would love to do that because I think it's great for me to talk about it. It's great for me to show you solutions on a PowerPoint, but I would love to you know for you guys to actually see live how these gaming solutions work as it were. So yeah, I'll put it out there and if that's something we can work towards, that'd be brilliant. Right. Well, we'll just call this webinar a taster for that future session, which I'm sure will be very popular because, you know, as you say, there's lots of bit of equipment involved and it is really good to see how you would set it all up um, yeah. and how how everybody is using it. So that is definitely noted. But for today, just a huge thank you from all of us. Um, got lots of nice comments coming through. It was it was well appreciated, and I'm sure um, that other people will access it on our on our website as a, as an archive webinar. So, thank you very much to everyone for coming along today. But especially a big thanks to Bob, and especially because you weren't feeling well as well. You've done <laughs> fantastically to get through the session. So, thank you very much, and to Robert for uh, his tech support in the background. So, thank you everyone. Take care. Bye for now. Bye now.